Good evening, everyone. Welcome. Welcome back to you and your health. We are extremely excited to have you join our program this evening. If you're watching the program for the very first time, my name is Erika Roberts, a co-host of this program. And I have my other co-host, Dr. Edward Isuman. Dr. Eddie is probably in the backstage helping. Oh, there he is. Hi, Dr. Eddie. Hi. How are you? Good, and you? <laughs> Fine, thank you. So we're running late, so we're going to get, get started. Um, this evening, we'll be focusing on congenital heart defect, particularly in infant. Atrial septal defect, a birth defect where there's a hole in the wall of the septum, is much more prevalent in infants in Ghana than perhaps we all may have assumed. So this evening, we have two special guests, both of whom are trained, board certified pediatric cardiologists, one of which is the first and only female pediatric cardiologist in Ghana, by the name of Professor Nana Ache Yao. We are so uh, extremely privileged to have Dr. Yao join us this evening. She will be joined by her good friend and colleague, also highly recognized in her field here in the Washington DC area, Dr. Annette Ansang. They will be discussing the disease process and its risks, treatment, and some of the challenges that they have encountered as they try their best to help patients with this diagnosis and how we could help as viewers of this program. We will also be highlighting a special baby by the name of Janelle Mensa, who has this defect and in need of urgent surgery. I believe Janelle's parents and family are watching from Ghana. A big hello to all of you. We know it's late in Ghana, so thank you so much for tuning in. To, to Janelle's family, if you're on, please, we don't mind saying a hello in the chat box so that we know that you are with us. I've been communicating with Janelle's aunt, Irabana, um, throughout the week, actually, regarding this program, and I'm sure she's also watching. So I saw Janelle's poster on our church platform, which was posted by her own um, auntie, Brenda Ajay. I then reposted the, the poster on um, a health professional platform that I belong to. And a friend of mine, Dr. T. Adusu, whom I credit for putting all of us together, contacted his friend, Dr. Annette Ansong, one of our presenters for this evening's discussion. Dr. Ansong asked whether the baby has been seen by Professor Yao in Ghana. So I was able to speak to Janelle's aunt throughout, um, through Auntie Brenda and learned that Janelle was indeed diagnosed by Professor Yao. So Professor Yao, Dr. Ansong and I had a conference call last Sunday to discuss how we could put this program together to bring awareness to the disease and see what we could do as a church and viewers of the program to support babies with this diagnosis and help raise funds, particularly for Janelle um, upcoming surgery. So Dr. Yao will be sharing additional information on Janelle's case during the program. As I mentioned, there are multiple children with this condition in Ghana, but we will be highlighting Janelle's case this evening. We have received permission from Janelle's parent, from her auntie Ravna, to discuss her case on this forum. For privacy, for privacy reasons, we want to clarify that we do have the consent of Janelle's parents to discuss her condition. We have a lot to discuss, and I want to make sure that we have allotted sufficient time for our speakers as well as question and answer period. So we can get started. Um, before we get started, I would like to give a brief introduction of each of our speakers, starting with Professor Nana Ache Yao. Professor Yao is the first and only female pediatric cardiologist in Ghana with accreditation from the United Kingdom. This means Professor Yao looks after the medical aspects of children with heart problems. Professor Yao currently works at the National Cardiothoracic Center and the Department of Child Health of the Kulubu, Hospital, uh, Kulubu Teaching Hospital in Accra, Ghana. She's an associate professor in general pediatric and pediatric cardiology at the University of Cape Coast Medical School. Having previously lectured in the, in the University of Legon Medical School Pediatric Department, Professor Yao has worked in world-class pediatric cardiology centers in the United Kingdom and Ireland. She has intense passion for the medical care of children's heart and works tirelessly with immense commitment towards the huge volume of service requirements, children with heart problems present in Ghana. Together with her team of colleagues, she has performed the first life-saving cardiac 
procedures in three babies in Ghana. She has organized in Ghana an international pediatric cardiology training seminar, a master class in pediatric cardiology with an international faculty from USA in South Africa. Professor Yao actively participated in training and mentoring programs for pediatricians with the Ghana College of Physicians. She has served on executive boards of the Ghana Society of Cardiology as a treasurer and on the planning committees. Dr. Yao is a convener of Little Hearts Foundation, a charity that supports children with heart problems and raises funds to assist in the financing of cardiac um, operations for children in Ghana or outside the country. Professor Yao has collaborated with a Christian musical artist in concert, This Far By Grace, to raise funds for heart surgery for a child whose parents were selling their home to pay for the heart operation. On the social front, and she actually has time for socialization, <laughs> Professor Yao has served as the Parent Teacher Association Chairman and Chair Lady for Ghana Christian International High School and serves as the co-convener of Heart Connection Ministries, a women's children worship ministry in Dublin, Ireland. Professor Yao is actively involved in ministry speaking engagements for the youth and is the ex-president for her group of Ibri girls class 84, having served for the, as their president for seven years. She's married to Eric Yao, and together they have two adult children, Michelle and Jason. Now I'm gonna give you a brief introduction of Dr. Annette Ansong. Dr. Annette K. Ansong is a pediatric cardiologist and the medical director of outpatient cardiology at Children's National Hospital in Washington, D.C. Dr. Ansong is proud, is a proud daughter of immigrants from Ghana and was born and raised in the Washington DC area. She's a graduate of the University of Virginia followed by medical school at Howard University College of Medicine. She completed her pediatric residency and pediatric cardiology fellowship at Duke University Medical School while also obtaining a master's of health science in clinical research. It was during this time that she became involved with the NIH Pediatric Heart Network. Between 2009 and April 2021, Dr. Ansong was in private practice in Virginia. Her work, was, her work led her to recognition as a Northern Virginia and Washingtonian top doctor. Dr. Ansong is involved regionally and nationally on issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion. She also has an interest in global health and has performed mission work in Ghana and Haiti. Dr. Anson Curley is a co-chair, um, co-chaired the Women and Children Committee of the Associ Association of Bra Black Cardiologists Incorporated, sorry, and serves on the Adult Congenital and Pediatric Cardiology Leadership Council of the American College of Cardiology. Her career interests and passion have allowed for multiple publications, case reports and presentations, including this presentation. So let us welcome um, both of our guests, Dr. Yao and Dr. Ansong, to our program. Good evening. Good evening, Dr. Yao. Very good evening. I, I, know, it's, I know it's late. Hi, Dr. Ansong. Hello. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. We, Eddie and I, are humbled to be in your presence this evening. We are extremely Not grateful <laughs> that you took the time out of your busy schedule to, to be with us. So if you are ready yeah. um, to do the presentation, we're gonna start with Dr. Ansong first. Um, do you all see my slides? Yes, we can see your slides. Great, great. All right. So first of all, thank you so much, Valega, for that introduction. And I want to thank you, the audience, for having this this evening. You're humbled, but I'm even more humbled to be speaking before you. Um, just to guide you, I'll be giving you a brief overview of the state of child health and congenital heart disease in Ghana. And then Dr. Yao will get into the specifics of congenital heart disease and then baby Janelle's case. So first, let's begin with the story of Esther. She's a 26-year-old Ghanaian woman pregnant with her second child. Her first child died suddenly during the first week of life. 
cause unknown. She has concerns given what happened with her first child and the fact that Ghana has a high neonatal infant mortality rate. Will her baby make it? What can be done to increase survival? Before we go on, there are a few definitions that we have to understand. The first is under five mortality rate. So that's the number of babies, the number of children under the age of five who have died. And this is expressed per 1,000 live births. Then there's an infant mortality rate. That's the number of children less than a year of age who have passed away. And that's also expressed in per 1,000 live births. And then there's a neonatal mortality rate. That's the prob probability of children less than 28 days of life who have passed away. And that's expressed as per 1,000 live births. So I want, I want us all to understand the demographics of Ghana first. So this was taken in 2019, where uh, there are about 30 million people in Ghana. I think now in 2021, it's actually pushing 30. What? It's, it's um, actually more towards 31 million people. And Ghana has a young young population. Sorry, my daughter's here. <laughs> <laughs> population. Gabby, shh. Uh, <laughs> is 22. And uh, most of the population lives in the city. And about 13, 14% of Ghana's population is children under the age of five. So that's that's key. Continuing to look at the demographics, um, there are two numbers that I want you to look at. One is the infant mortality rate, which is 35.7 per 1,000. In the US, it's less than 10. And then the under five mortality rate, if you remember, that's the, the definition I showed you earlier in Ghana is 49.3 in, in the US less than 10 as well. So with that, believe it or not, that's actually an improvement for Ghana. In 2000, the United Nations, they had a convention, they met and pretty much wanted to improve the world, do better. So they came up with, with some goals called the Millennium Development Goals, um, eight of them. And the goal was by 2015 that there would be improvement in things like infant mortality rate, the under five mortality rate. The one that pertains to children is number four, reduction in child mortality. So it worked. Um, looking at the between 1990 and 2017, and the UN came into effect in 2000, you see a decrease in the under five mortality rate decrease in the infant mortality rate and a decrease in the neonatal, neonatal mortality rate. But you notice with the neonatal mortality rate, it went down, but not as deep as the other two um, rates here. And this is the global, um, the whole world. If you look specifically at Ghana at the under five mortality rate, you see that in 1990, the mortality rate for children under the age of five was 130 per 1,000. And then by 2017, it steadily declined to about 50 um, children dying under the age of five per 1,000. So definitely an improvement, but of course, you know, we can do better. So at the end of 2015, the UN was like, we've done a really good job these last 15 years. Why, why, don't, we, why don't we do more? So they continued the program they started with the millennium and went on to the sustainable developmental goals. So they doubled the, bench, the goals that they wanted to do. Um, and the one that pertains to us, for, to pediatrics, is good health and well-being. And the goal for that was by 2030, the UN wanted countries or wanted the world to end preventable deaths of newborns and children under the age of five, with the goal for the neonatal mortality rate to be 12 per 1,000 and for the under five to be less than 25 per 1,000. They also, by 2030, wanted to reduce by one third premature deaths from non-communicable diseases, such as mm -hmm. congenital heart disease, right? Okay. Um, through prevention and treatment. And another goal uh, that the SDG had was to achieve universal health coverage, which is very key because as you'll soon learn in countries like Ghana, people who need congenital heart surgery need to pay out of pocket. Universal health coverage would be something that would prevent that. Um, the other thing to know was that 2015 is when this started. By 2017, 118 of these UN countries had actually met the goal of having the under five mortality rate less than 25 and neonatal rate uh, less than 12. Of the remaining countries that hadn't met the goal, as you might guess, the majority were in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. And so this is a map actually displaying that. So if you look, all the countries in the light blue are the countries that met the UN goal. 
for the under five mortality rate. Those that didn't meet the goal were um, the sub-Saharan, were, were the sub-Saharan countries and South Asia. Um, the same with the neonatal, neonatal mortality rate. For Ghana, it was 24.2, which was above what the average global rate was of 18 per 1,000. So basically, if you're a baby born in sub-Saharan Africa or South Asia, you're nine times more likely to die in the first month of life than one born in a high-income country. And then three-quarters of all new baby newborn deaths occur in the first week of life. And up to two-thirds of this could be preventable if um, measures are put in place. And the map again showing the neonatal mortality rate, which is similar to the under five, where you see the majority of the countries who have not yet met the goal are in Sub-Saharan Africa and South Asia. So I'm gonna segue into congenital heart disease. So we see there's a lot of work to be done. And one of the ways in which we can tackle uh, these mortality rates is by focusing on the non-communicable diseases such as congenital heart disease and cancer and such. You know, before the thought was we uh, was the focus was communicable diseases such as malaria or TB, and rightfully so. But now we're seeing the tables are sort of turning where we need to pay more attention to these communicable diseases. So Ghana actually has a pretty rich history when it comes to congenital heart disease. Um, one of the, not one, but the first surgeon uh, was Dr. Charles Eisman. Um, so in, 19, in the 1960s, he became um, you know, certified official and he performed the first open heart surgery in 1964. And it was closure of an atrial septal defect, which is a hole in the top chambers of the heart. Then after him, uh, there's a doctor, Professor Yebwa, who was actually a urologist, uh, but he also had some pediatric cardiothoracic uh, training as well and did some surgeries then. Uh, then Dr. Seth Biko, uh, Ganyan, trained in Italy. He also performed some congenital heart disease uh, surgeries and is actually the uh, father-in-law of one of the pediatric cardiothoracic surgeons in the US. And then a well-known one is Dr. Pwabna from Pong Boatin. He trained in Ghana and Europe, and he was one of the first uh, pioneers in heart transplantation um, and actually did the first one in sub-Saharan Africa. And he, what he's really known for um, is opening the National Cardiothoracic Center in Korlebu Teaching Hospital. That's where Dr. Yao currently works. And the, he met a lot of opposition when he first wanted to do this, because like I said earlier, a lot of people felt the focus should be infectious diseases. And, you know, why are we spending all these resources on uh, you know, heart, heart stuff, not the non-communicable diseases. Um, but, you know, he prevailed and he persevered. And fortunately, for, fortunately, we have the NCTC um, that's performing surgery. Um, then Dr. Francis Finn Thompson. So he's a pediatric cardio, a Ghanaian pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon um, at Boston. So since the 2000, over 10 years, he's been doing mission trips um, to uh, Kumasi uh, at uh, Confo Noche Hospital, where they've done um, surgeries for, for the children uh, there as well. Um, and then the NCTC, uh, beautiful building that you see here that's actually yeah. works. Yeah. Um, and some more pictures. They have two ORs, uh, and none of you can correct me if I'm wrong, but two ORs and a 30 bed ward um, and, uh, an and an ICU too as well. Yeah. Uh, so now the the current the current state of the Ghanaian pediatric cardiothoracic surgery lies in um lies with the next few pictures I'll be showing you. Um, this is Doctor this is Doctor Isaac Utre. He's a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon uh, at Confa Noche Hospital. And when Doctor Finn Thompson comes to Kumasi, they team up and do the heart surgeries then. And Dr. Frank Edwin, he's also a pediatric cardiothoracic surgeon at Curly Boo. He did his training um, in Ghana and in South Africa as well. And Dr. Ensua Mensa, um, uh, he's also a surgeon in Curly Boo, uh, trained in Ghana and South Africa in pediatric cardiothoracic surgery. And Dr. Innocent Adzamali, um, surgeon as well, uh, who trains in Ghana. Um, so, so you see there's a nice contingent Sorry about that, guys. It's okay. <laughs> um, and then last but not least is Dr. Is Dr. Nana Yao. Uh, Gabby, Gabby. 
Sorry. <laughs> it, it's Dr. Yao, um, mm -hmm. who's a pediatric cardiologist um, in, in Ghana, and she works alongside Dr. Blay Ngwa and um, Dr. Boatin. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, Gabby, please. <laughs> and so the uh, the bur so the question is the burden of, what is the burden of congenital heart disease in Africa and you know we don't Ghana doesn't collect population data uh, but so we have to extrapolate what we know with the birth rate of Ghana and the prevalence of congenital heart disease um, throughout the world which is one percent so looking at this chart here. Uh, we see that Nigeria has the most, the highest prevalence of congenital heart disease at 52,000. Um, and this is probably underestimated. And then um, Ghana, 6,000 here, but but probably, um, <laughs> but probably, yeah. probably close to 8,000. 8, and then here's a map of um, Africa. And you see the, the greener countries are those with a uh, higher prevalence of congenital heart disease. And then actually this, we don't need to. So this I, I want you to look at. So uh, this was a one year look at the number of patients in a, a clinic in Accra. And you see VSDs, ASDs, and Tetralogy mm -hmm. Fallot. Um, so these are the holes in the heart. So VSD and the ASD and Tetralogy Fallot is a cyanotic heart lesion, meaning it's a type of heart lesion that can turn babies blue. But these surgeries are one and done, meaning that if you repair them, then the children will, they'll be good. You know, they can live a very great life. Um, uh, but unfortunately in Ghana, getting this type of surgery, as you learn with babies now, is, is, it's hard to do. And even if you go out of country, you have to pay out of pocket. Um, but a good majority of the congenital heart disease lesions are, 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 are fixable and can change the course of someone's life. And this is another look again over a five-year period, 2011 to 2016, um, of congenital heart disease. Um, and you see out of the nearly 2,500, um, a quarter of them were um, were VSDs um, and then ASD and it came next. And then um, age-wise, you see that it's the younger children, zero to five, who are seen to have uh, the congenital heart disease um, mm -hmm. in Accra. And so the challenges, the challenges of congenital heart disease are that they're being missed early on um, because, you know, we don't, uh, right now, what's not being done, but hopefully Dr. Yao and I can implement is like fetal diagnosis of congenital heart disease. So those that have critical congenital heart disease interventions can be had when they're born, whether that it's in country or out of country, at least preparation can be made. Um, the human resources, like I said, Dr. Yao is the only pediatric cardiologist and in Ghana of 31 million people. Um, and then it's great that Ghana has the four heart surgeons, um, but, you know, it's the country of 30 million. Uh, the U.S. has way more. Even in Washington, D.C. itself, there's way, way more. Yeah. Um, so those resources are needed. And then there's the financial burden of surgery. It's expensive. People can't easily afford it out of pocket. And then we need to make congenital heart disease and non-communicable disease a political priority because um, it's not. And hence, the resources aren't there for it. Um, so solutions are like what I mentioned, making the diagnosis early on. And then once, and if not, when the babies are born, doing it in the nurseries, uh, there's a pulse oximetry test. Uh, that's testing your oxygen. Um, that's done in the nursery here in the U.S. to make sure that their oxygen saturation is normal. If it's not, then you wonder, is there heart disease? Um, another solution, since they're limited human resources, can telemedicine be used, you know, um, sort of uh, outsourcing um images where maybe Dr. Yao had wants me to see an echo, I can read it here in the US. Um, so, uh, sorry about that, so sorry. Um, so telemedicine is an option. Um, so I wanna leave you with this last quote, do not follow where the path may lead, but go instead where there's no path and leave a trail. So I think with congenital heart disease in Ghana, we just have to keep trying and, and make it a political priority. So we save these kids' lives. Um, and that they don't go to the wayside, especially since the majority of, you know, Ghana's gem, I always feel is in its youth. So we have to take care of, of our children. And then next, this is this was my mission trip to um, Kumasi with Dr. Oh. Thompson's oh. Boston group. This is one of the um, children that we, uh, that we screened. And then this is me using one of the portable echo devices to, to do an echo cardiogram. And then uh, this was at uh, NCTC uh, in Accra. You see Dr. Yao and Dr. Edwin there. 
Yes. And then um, the two surgeons, uh, Dr. Finn Thompson, Dr. Archway, and then me and the little one. Oh. Yeah, I see. <laughs> it's live. It's okay. <laughs> That's okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dr. Anson. Um, that's a lot of information that I personally I had no you know awareness of. I think those of us here tend to focus on the U.S. numbers and not necessarily have an idea what's going on in actually homeland. So we're grateful that you're able to provide that and overview information for our viewers. So back to Yao. I'm not sure if you're ready to provide some information about clinical aspects and taking care of these patients in Ghana and some of the challenges that you're facing and. Yeah. Uh, share some light on Janelle's case. Absolutely. Well, thank you very, very much. Um, I've just kind of looked at it um, in a slightly, well, smaller but broader sense um, to what Annette has just shared with us. Um, and so I'm um, looking at in low resource settings and Ghana is definitely a low resource setting um, and the transitional needs and challenges. And specifically like we've spoken about earlier on, looking at Janelle's case. I'd like to sincerely, sincerely thank the leadership, the board and the entire congregation of the Ebenezer Methodist Church in Maryland for your precious, precious time this evening. And definitely to Erika Roberts and Dr. Edward Asuma. And it's very short notice, like Erika said, when we met on Sunday and spoke, we thought, oh yes, it's great. Then we realized that, oh, it's just about 48 hours to putting all this together. And I mean, they've just been great. And I really, really want to appreciate Dr. Annette and Song. When you're alone, um, you know, somewhere as a professional, it's just great to have another professional supporting you. Um, and Annette is just great. She's a great friend. She's a great professional. So, Annette, thank you so much for being there. Um, what is congenital heart disease, really? What is it? <clears throat> excuse me, it's heart disease that is present at birth. So it's there. The problem occurred in utero whilst the baby was growing. Um, the child is born with a problem and grows with the complications of the problem if it's not solved, but then it's always there, whether it's been fixed or it's not fixed. Now, when we look at congenital heart disease and its incidence, and Annette has already spoken about this, so I'm just summarizing and just reiterating it. Its incidence, looking at different studies all over the world, is about six to 13 per thousand live births. So we can put it simply and approximately as 1%, which means that's one in 100. So when 100 children are born, one child will have congenital heart disease. As a group of Con abnormalities, congenital heart disease is the most common type. And Annette spoke about under five mortality. It accounts for 20 to 40% of all deaths that are caused by congenital abnormalities. So that's quite a big number. It's the leading cause of perinatal and infant death when it comes to malformations. Now, the World Society of Pediatric and Congenital Heart Surgery has a vision and I believe, and it's a deep, you know, very profound and very important to each and every one of us who's participating in this program. And I believe particularly, you know, on the African continent in Ghana that every child born anywhere in the world, I've replaced the world with Ghana, anywhere in the world with a heart problem would have access to appropriate medical and surgical care. So that translates into every child born anywhere in Ghana with a heart problem would have access to appropriate medical and surgical care. So this includes the person that is born in Navrongo, the person that is born in Bolgatanga, um, in Wa, in Ho, in Choco, in Nima. Every child should have access. But Annette has shown us a fairly grim picture of what the actual situation is. Ghana's population in January 2018 was estimated at 29 million. Now it's 31 million. The data from UNICEF in 2012 showed that 8,000 children with congenital heart disease were born in Ghana. We have unpublished data from the intensive care of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital. 
which supports the incidence of one in a hundred children being born with congenital heart disease. So when we look at 2012, just looking at some basic figures, it means that 667 children were born with heart disease in a month. 167 children were born every week in 2012 with heart disease. And that translates to 23 children every single day. 23 children are born with heart problems in Ghana. And at the moment, probably more. There is a concept, a scientific term of critical congenital heart disease, which falls in the big bag of congenital heart disease. And it's defined as congenital heart disease that requires surgery or a catheter-based intervention in the first year of life. It accounts for about 25% of all those born with congenital heart disease. So if you have one in a hundred born in that group, 25% of these cases will be critical congenital heart disease, which means they need urgent surgery. Usually it's really within the first four to six weeks of life, but there are some cases that sometimes can go to a year of life. Now, Frank Edwin and Prof um, Rob Kentley did a, um, a research study and in the pre-surgical era, we know that 20% of children who were born with congenital heart disease survived into adulthood. So this would have been like, you know, pre-1945 and, you know, before that, less than 20%. Then, of course, advances in medicine came, advances in pediatric cardiology. And in the last 50 years, it shows that there is survival into adulthood in about 70 to 80% of these children who are born with cardiac disease. These are children who live in the developed world. They have access to optimum treatment. The mortality for most surgical, you know, cardiac surgical operations is less than 3%. Hmm. The level of this care for congenital heart disease, sadly to say, is unavailable in sub-Saharan Africa. When it comes to international standards of care in pediatric cardiology, we know that good antenatal care is very important. So the patient, the mother, gets an anomaly scan or a fetal echo. And this is so important, a fetal echo. The reason I say that is because at the moment, what prevails in Ghana is that mothers, expectant mothers, get an anomaly scan, but not a fetal echo. And this is heartbreaking when it comes to the practical aspect. Because most of the mothers that you speak to who have children with congenital heart disease, almost every one of them will say, but I had an anomaly scan. They told me that everything was fine. Why does the child have a heart problem? Just on Saturday morning, I got a call saying that there was a patient at the University of Ghana Medical Center who had been transferred, a baby who was seven days old, been transferred from a local, another local hospital with an oxygen requirement saturating about 40% to 60%. And they were concerned that this could be congenital heart disease. So I went along to see this patient and review the patient and I performed an echo. This baby was the first baby of the parents. It turned out that the baby had pulmonary atresia and tricuspid atresia. So two major valves, one of them is an inflow valve, like a doorway that allows blood to go into the ventricles, the pumping chambers did not exist. The other one, the valve, the pulmonary valve that allows blood to go out of the heart to the lungs also was non-existent, did not form. So this baby has a lethal cardiac condition and what indeed would fall into the group of critical congenital heart disease. The mother kept saying, I had an anomaly scan. Nobody said that the child had a problem. I was told that everything was fine. And so I say this to reiterate the importance of manpower and the challenges that we have in our environment at the moment, that mothers get anomaly scans, but not necessarily a fetal echo. The few babies that have been able to do fetal echoes on are those who the obstetrician notices something and feels that mm, the four chamber view is not quite right. Let's send them over to Kolebu Teaching Hospital to see the obstetricians there. The obstetricians call me, we sit down and we do a fetal scan. 
and a fetal echo. And there are very few. We've done maybe 10 so far just because of the demands on manpower and time for all of us. So good antenatal care is very important. If cardiac disease is suspected, then the delivery of such a child should be done in a specialized pediatric cardiac center. Immediate assessment by a pediatric cardiologist post-delivery with the necessary investigations and intensive care with ventilation as necessary, surgery or cardiac catheterization is performed as soon as possible. All of these things are important and a deficiency in any of these areas, accessibility, acceptability, efficiency, safety, will lead to what we know as a low resource setting. Now, I just want to talk just a little bit about some of the cases that I have encountered since I relocated to Ghana. So this little guy here is called NT. He presented at four weeks of age with respiratory distress. He had been managed in different private hospitals, and then he was referred to Kolibu. And sadly, because we don't have newborn screening in Ghana, this is what pertains with most of congenital heart disease. It tends to be, in quotes, an incidental finding. So it did an echo on this baby, and it showed that the child had a transposition of the great arteries, which means that the big blood vessels that leave the heart, one to the body, one to the lungs, were switched. They were the wrong way around. The baby was managed with medication and was subsequently transferred to South Africa at about eight weeks of age, where he had surgery successfully. He stayed in intensive care there for ages just because he was a late diagnosis and had complications. This is me transferring the child to Cape Town. The child, I remember, we flew from Accra to Johannesburg, from Johannesburg to Cape Town. He collapsed as we got off the aircraft in Johannesburg. Had to take him for resuscitation in the airport clinic in Johannesburg, get him back on board the aircraft, transfer him to Cape Town, and really, by the grace of God, this child just made it to Cape Town. This other child, Ari, presented at two days of age, also with severe respiratory distress, was blue, was the infant of a diabetic, initially had an echo done, was not fully cooperative, showed some bit of septal that the ventri I mean, the walls of the heart were thick. But this child had ongoing blueness, cyanosis, and then a repeat echocardiogram was done, which showed that the baby had, similar to the other baby, transposition where the blood vessels, again, were switched, um, they were switched round. Now, in order to the management of this, ideally, in um, a center you know, of excellence, would be to create a hole to improve the oxygenation for the first few days, first week, two weeks of life, and then for definitive surgery. We don't have that in Ghana. Unfortunately, we don't have the equipment. We don't have a pediatric um, cardiac catheterization suite to do this. The parents were desperate. They were desperate. They were distressed. They had lost their mother, so the child's grandmother, um, to um, com um, complete heart. She had complete heart block, had a pacemaker in, and had collapsed just about three months before the baby was born. In their limited, you know, medical knowledge, heart disease was heart disease. So having lost the grandmother, baby born with heart disease, it was just too distressing for them. Ongoing discussions kept coming back to me. Can I do something about this? Eventually, I contacted my friends outside. I said, can you send me a septostomy kit? A septostomy kit is what would be the interim palliative procedure to create the hole to make the child, to help the child to improve the oxygenation and then do the, transfer out for definitive surgery. My friend, first of all, I tried Sudan. She went to DHL. DHL refused to take the equipment. They said it was medical. Oh, wow. They wouldn't take it. <clears throat> then I contacted another friend in India. They couldn't get it down in time. It was taking too long. It was too complicated. Contacted my friends in the UK. Um, they couldn't put it together. Different challenges. Contacted a friend in Egypt. So she said, oh, yes, I'll put it together. She went to DHL. DHL refused to take it again. So she just went to the airport in Egypt, in Cairo, and said, listen, there's a child in Ghana who is dying, who needs this, and just spoke to somebody traveling in business class, said, will you take this? And this businessman kindly agreed and brought the kids to Ghana. The kid gets to Ghana, and I'm trying to get an anesthetist 
to put this baby to sleep to perform this procedure. That was another challenge because they are not used to it. They were not comfortable to do this. All this time, this child, we're just counting hours, days for this child. I couldn't find any boot, anyone. Then finally, someone who says, okay, I'll take the chance. I took, I sat down. I have so much respect and gratitude to this doctor, Dr. Pokwa Sapom. I explained the physiology to her, explained the problem, explained what we wanted to do. She said, okay, I'll put the child to sleep for you. So we went ahead. There was a big brave step with my colleagues and we created a hole in the upper, in the wall of the upper chambers of the heart, between the upper chambers of the heart called the atrial septum. And then the baby improved in oxygenation and we transferred the baby out to India, to Apollo Children's Hospital, which is the same hospital that I've discussed for Janelle. Um, so these are some pictures from our intensive care from the National Thora um, Cardiothoracic Center. Um, this is the intensive care. And the challenge again is that most of the time we cannot treat babies who are under 10 kilos because in Ghana, from a manpower point, we do not have specifically trained personnel, a pediatric cardiac intensivist and a pediatric cardiac anesthetist who can manage. So my adult anesthetist and adult intensivist are very brave, but they are not comfortable to look after children under 10 kilos, which means that going back to the definition of critical congenital heart disease, which occurs in children, 25%, most of them are newborns, all these children in Ghana at the moment die, sadly to say. Any child born with critical congenital heart disease in Ghana does not have access to cardiac catheterization or surgery. And sadly, sadly, heartbreaking, they pass away. This is the Department of Child Health. You can see, um, and that's, Annette has already shown um, pictures of um, the National Cardiothoracic Center. In the bottom right-hand corner is an echocardiogram machine. Since last year, October, this machine, which was donated to the Department of Child Health, broke down. I have cried, I have wept, I have said so many things. I've said, please, I need another machine. No, unfortunately, the machine has not been replaced. You can just imagine, and I express at this moment, my intense distress, and I've shared this with Annette and we've spoken about it. The machine cost about $51,000. This particular one was donated. So from October till about February of this year, children were not getting echocardiograms. They were, they were not being diagnosed. They were being mismanaged because we just didn't know what was wrong with them. And to date, we still don't have a machine. What did I do? I decided to cross the road. The Department of Child Health is on the opposite side to the National Cardiothoracic Center. So I have a long list of patients, sometimes 20, 30 patients in a clinic, put them together, carry them across the road to the National Cardiothoracic Center and echo them. If a patient is too sick to be able to carry it, uh, to be carried across the road or is oxygen dependent, is on oxygen, it means that they cannot get an echocardiogram for a diagnosis. Here are triplets who were born. The little guy in the middle here had a fairly basic um, um, cardiac lesion called a PDA, a patent ductus arteriosus. Um, diagnosed very early, but because he was so small and there were challenges with his weight, he just wasn't putting on weight. At the time, he was, I think, 2.5 kilos. Couldn't have it done. If he was going to have it done, it would have been a bit more invasive and he would have had a cut to have it done called a thoracotomy. Again, in senses of excellence, this is done by keyhole surgery at cardiac catheterization. Spoke to the parents about it. They prefer to go the less invasive route of keyhole surgery, cardiac catheterization. And so they organized themselves and the father took this little guy here to, to India, to Apollo Children's Hospital, um, where he had it done and brought him back to Ghana. Here he is, as you can see him with his brothers, grown up all nice, all sorted. It's a really, really a very simple problem. It's not a big problem. And you may wonder why I keep saying Apollo Children's Hospital in Chennai, because from a cost point, that would be the most reasonable from a financial point. In the US, a foreigner coming into the US without health insurance, medical insurance, pays about minimum $70,000 for surgery. 
In India, the same operation is about $10,000. Why do I choose India? I choose India and only one hospital, Apollo Children's Hospital. And that's because I know the staff there. We train together in the UK. I know the surgeons. I know the pediatric cardiologists. And we work together as a team for these children that I send here. Here's another boy. There, He's a twin. That's him standing with his twin there at the right-hand corner. Similar situation. He had a VSD, which is what Janelle, um, who we're going to be talking about very soon, has. And he went off to India and had the surgery done, as you can see him. I saw him earlier on this year, and he's doing very, very well. I'm just going to share one more story, which is a bit sad, um, but just to highlight for you what really goes on here. This is a 46-year-old lady who collapsed a lecture um, in front of her students while she was giving a lecture. She was taken to the local hospital and left in a wheelchair. Um, she was labeled as having a cardiovascular accident, and... Um, she was left in the wheelchair because there was no bed. Her husband was called. Um, however, she had no risk factors for a CVA. She had a normal BMI. Her lipid profile was good. She exercised on a regular pulse. Somebody examined her pulse and said, hmm, this pulse is irregular. Ordered a chest X-ray, ECG, and echo. She had atrial um, flutter at the time. And it ended up showing that she had severe, severe narrowing of one of the major valves in her heart and a huge clot in her heart. She was flown out of the country that night because the clot had migrated. Fortunately, she was somebody who had international medical insurance. So an air ambulance came from South Africa, picked her up, and we sent her to South Africa. So treatment tends to be for those who can afford it outside the country for critical cases or um, for those who can be sponsored. And that brings us to Janelle. Janelle is four months old and weighs 4.2 kilos. That's not a great weight for a child that age. We expect a child at four months who would have been born at, say, 3 to 3.5 kilos to weigh much more than that. What does Janelle have? Janelle has got a hole in the wall between the pumping chambers of her heart. That is the ventricles. So from the Latin terminology, it's called a ventricular septal defect. Now, a hole in the heart, as tends to be the low, well, the term that would be used um, by the layperson, really what we're describing here is a hole in the wall of the pumping chambers of the heart. It creates a lot of havoc, as Janelle is going through at the moment because the blood goes the wrong way. It goes where we don't want it to go. It goes up into the lungs much more than it ought to be. So all the calories, or, or should I say most of the calories that baby gets, baby is using it to breathe instead of to grow. So the baby doesn't grow as they ought to grow, which would be the situation for Janelle. Um, it causes the baby, exposes them to an increased risk of lung infections, respiratory disease, causes them to sweat. They're not able to feed properly, very distressing for parents, irritable. The baby feeds for a little while, then stops. It's, it's a very distressing and very difficult and challenging situation for parents with any child. And this is what Janelle has been found to have. I met Janelle a few weeks ago in clinic. Her parents brought her, um, you know, thinking that, well, there is some problem. We're just coming to see the cardiologist and that will be it. And of course, we're devastated at the diagnosis as any parent would be when you've carried your baby, your precious baby, and then you're told that your baby has a big hole in the heart um, and is not growing and needs a heart operation. Um, so that's what Janelle has. Um, so the WHO, every newborn says that every newborn child, every child born in this world deserves to be given all the opportunities in life to live his or her life to the fullest. These are two babies that I had the privilege of looking after. Um, the one on the top um, had a very well complex called trunkus arteriosus, also went to the same center in India and had surgery done. To help us, to help Janelle, we need a lot of support. There are many, many, many children like Janelle in Ghana. Many. 
I've spoken about one that I saw on Saturday morning. I had a big clinic today. I saw a few more like that. I've spoken about the echocardiogram machine, which we don't have to date, in order to be able to find these children early enough and to help them. Annette spoke about pulse oximetry, which is a simple test which is used in centers of excellence around the world to look and screen for children born with heart disease and expedite their care and their management and intervention for them. Down there is a handheld portable echocardiogram machine, which we can take around to different hospitals um, and diagnose children and indeed expedite their care. Um, we're still far from being like, you know, a center of excellence when it comes to pediatric cardiology, when it comes to heart disease in Ghana, but we need to start somewhere. We need to let people know. We need to let the politicians know. We need to let the government know that we have a challenge we cannot say that, yes, um, looking after vomiting, diarrhea and vomiting, malaria is all that we need to do, um, you know, infectious disease. There are children who, like we have said, on a daily basis die in Ghana because they have heart problems. And definitely, like I've, I've said, critical congenital heart disease is one of the things that we don't even see in Ghana because all these children sadly, sadly don't make it. So... Our children are our future, um, like Vanessa Mandela said, and our basic responsibility is to care for them in the best and most compassionate manner. History, indeed, will judge our efforts to create results for these children. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Yao. Thank you. This oh, it's heartbreaking here in some of the stories. It's just uh, amazing that um, you were able to help these children to those who, who've been able to survive. Um, I'm just lost for words, just listening to, <laughs> listening to the stories that you shared. So thank you, thank you again to both of you. As we mentioned, we're gonna be highlighting Janelle's case um, as Dr. Yao and Dr. Anson mentioned, there's a lot of babies that have this condition. Um, but this evening, we're going to be um, highlighting Janelle's case, which was brought to our attention. So we have our steward, my auntie from my church, Auntie Jane Kosa Inti, and she will be speaking about how we can contribute to this cause. Welcome, Auntie. <laughs> You're mute. I think you're on mute again. It's still on mute. Okay, I think, oh, it's back, back to mute it again. <laughs> okay, oh, he <laughs> went back again. Eddie, are you able to unmute auntie? I'm not sure if you're able to. Yeah, you're still you're still muted, Auntie. So okay, perfect. We can hear you now. Okay, great. I'm great. sorry. That's I okay. had myself muted, so I don't know why we were going back and forth. But um, <laughs> evening to everyone, and um, as Eric was said, I'm just lost for words. Um, hearing the stories and um, being over here, um, away from Ghana, and hearing these stories just makes our hearts melt. And I just want to commend these two ladies. Um, first, Dr. Annette Anson for having the passion um, to work with children in Ghana and elsewhere. And um, we, I mean, I can't just say enough. I can't just say enough um, because being a physician is one thing. Being a pedi um, ped pediatrician is another thing. Being a pediatric cardiologist, I just can't imagine. So um, I just I, I, I applaud the two of you. And for Professor Nanecha uh, Yao, uh, for me, just listening to the two of you is the, is the compassion you have for what you do. You're not just physicians, but you have such compassion for what you do. And I, I just pray for God's blessings for you. For Dr. Yao, it's what passed, it's almost midnight in Ghana. 
have you taken time out of your busy schedule to present to us? I just, I, I'm lost for words. I just pray for God's blessings on your lives. And uh, for the little ones we heard from Dr. Anson, may God bless you and your family, all of you. Um, and as a mother, you know, this is um, Tuesday evening and your children need your attention, but then your love for humanity, um, you know, just goes beyond all this. So I just want to bless you for what you do. Um, with that being said, like uh, Maripa rightfully said, we are focusing on Janelle. And as parents, as grandmothers, as aunties, as um, friends, it's our mandate to pull our resources together to make um, this possible for Janelle. And I just want to remind us as, as Christians, there are a number of virtues that scripture admonishes us to have. Kindness is one of them. Being compassionate, being thoughtful, being empathetic. And um, I just want to also remind us that doing this goes a long way because Bible tells us that kindness is rewarded. It's remembered. And above all, it's a spiritual service. Bible tells us in Luke 6, 36, I'm going to be brief. It's, it says that be merciful just as your father is merciful. So in short, I'm just entreating everyone here on, on the platform or on Facebook. Let's pull our resources together. Join hands with me. And it's my prayer that we'll raise enough money. It's not going to be only tonight. It's going to be ongoing. But in you know, most importantly and urgently to make sure that Janelle gets the surgery done as soon as possible. It's my prayer that we are able to raise enough money. I heard about um, the portable echo, echo cardiogram machine, the pulse socks. I mean, I, I, um, I'll find out how much these cost. But first of all, we're going to raise funds tonight. And I'm just praying that God will touch everyone's heart to donate to this course. I'm going to start off by giving $200 to this course right now. And um, I'm treating everyone on this call to please, please, just look at what is going on in Ghana. We are all Ghanaians and that's why we are so um, encouraged. When I, we saw the fly going around and first of all, we have to be careful because you know people solicit for funds and we don't know where they're going. So when we spoke and Erepo and I talked and she got in touch with um, Dr. Yao and Dr. Ansong. We were just so excited to have this um, program. So I'm entreating everyone on the, Facebook, on the Facebook right now to donate. You can pledge, um, and the, I believe Dr. A, um, Eddie did post the yes. number. There are different, yeah, there are different ways you could give. Um, you can send Zell to um, a this number or cash up. And also um, for, I can hardly read the information for Ghana. So that, that's, that's Little Hearts in Ghana, which is the foundation for Dr. Yao. And mm -hmm. that's through Echo Bank. And the account number is listed as well, but that's 344-1000-449-194. Again, that's 344-1000-449-194. And um, if you're in the U.S., if you want to donate through Zelle or Cash App, and that's Dr. Eddie's number. That's 240-475-7129. And all the monies will be donated to Janelle, towards Janelle's surgery. Um. Okay. And uh, as I said, it's my prayer that we raise enough to cover Janelle's surgery and also have um, funds available for Dr. Yao and Dr. Angson to continue the wonderful, wonderful work that they are doing. I mean, the statistics are just mind-blowing. And um, we really need to rally around and assist as much as we can. So um, Dr. Yao and Dr. Anson, God bless you. Um, we just, we are praying that we, and I don't know if you see any. Uh, 
I lost you a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we lost you a little bit, but thank you, thank you. Thank you, Auntie Jane. Erica, for... please, um, we have uh, just some two or three questions. Sure. Maybe. Okay. Sure. All right. So um, someone asked from here. Let me go to my... Uh, Are you I... able to project it on the screen? Or... No, I think this was a, a message. So okay. I wasn't able to. But uh, the person was asking, I want to know what causes the malformation in uterus. Are the mothers doing something wrong? Oh, wow. <laughs> no, not at all. And that's one of the first things I tell parents whenever I have to make the diagnosis of congenital heart disease. Nothing that the mom did or, or didn't do. The heart is one of the things that forms the first few weeks after conception. Um, so even you know before the mothers find out that they're even pregnant, the, they have a baby and the heart is already formed. Um, you know, there are certain drugs that can lead to heart um, malformations and there's certain uh, genetic syndromes that can run in families. Um, but by far and large, it's nothing that the mom has done or, you know, didn't do that contributed uh, to the heart disease. So moms have to know that. They have to know. A lot of these are just isolated. It, it just happened. Um, defects. Okay. And then I think the last one says that will any of the candidates benefit from organ transplant? If so, is there any advocacy on organ donation, although it might be taboo with some people from a religious perspective? So organ transplant is, is I mean, heart disease has to be fixed. Um, it's only there are other types of heart disease, which we call cardiomyopathies, which is disease of the muscles of the heart that um, at some stage need a transplant. But when it comes to heart disease in children, it needs to be fixed. It's um, so simply put, it's like plumbing. It's either some plumbing needs to take place or some patching needs to take place in terms of a whole. So no is the answer, not cardiac transplant, um, not organ transplant. Okay. Do we have more questions? Or? No. We don't have more questions. Okay, so I, I have one or two questions um, regarding screening. Obviously, we do not have a screening program in Ghana at the moment. And since screening is a challenge, I'm just curious as to what um, signs and symptoms should the mothers be aware of to know that this is ESD or VSD um, if they were not diagnosed um, during pregnancy. Yeah, it's... it's um... We tell the mothers that if your baby is breathing faster than you think, in quote, is normal, um, particularly if you're a second-time mother, you wouldn't know. If you're a first-time mother, it's very difficult. If your baby is not gaining weight, as they ought to uh, gain weight, so when you end, fortunately, they take the babies to be weighed on a regular basis. So if the weight gain is not you know, adequate, that's something to be concerned about. Um, the baby's sweating too much when they feed. I mean, babies sweat, it's hot in Ghana, but sometimes the sweating can be out of keeping, particularly you put them down to sleep and you lift them up and the back of their heads or the sheet is, is, is fairly wet, something to look out for. Um, most of the babies that we get diagnosed with congenital heart disease, unfortunately, come with chest infections and they're admitted to the hospital and then they get an echocardiogram done and then we find that they have heart disease. But those would be some of the things, poor weight gain, sweating, and poor feeding. Okay. okay. Um, would they consider heart murmurs as well or? But that, yes, heart murmurs, but that would be if a doctor has listened, a pediatrician or a physician or a GP has listened. But in the absence of another doctor seeing the baby, if it's just a lay person or the parents, then those would be other things. But definitely cardiac murmur, but that would be in the hospital setting or clinic setting. Okay. Okay, Katie, you're going to say something. Yeah, I was going to say that um, Sister Jane is back on the line and uh, we need to meet our target of 15,000. So, <laughs> the appeal. So, um, the appeal, the appeal, the appeal. Yeah. They appeal. Um, before we do that, I was just wondering if Dr. Yaf, you don't mind sharing how Janelle's case will be coordinated with the hospital in India. All right. So, um, usually what happens is that I would 
formally refer her, which I've already done, and they send back a letter quoting the cost of the survey, which is the letter that I've shared with Janelle's mother this afternoon and with yourselves, I had shared it um, earlier on last week. Um, and then once um, the funds are ready, um, the funds are transferred to the hospital and then the hospital will generate a visa letter um, which the parents will use to apply for a visa. Um, and then they do the traveling formalities in terms of visa clearance and yellow fever vaccinations and COVID. Um, and then that's really it. Um, they, they get a medical, um, the baby gets a medical check fit to fly before they go. Um, and then they arrive in India. All this time, myself and the teams, we are in discussion. Um, they are picked up from the airport by the hospital, looked after carefully. Um, usually within three to five days, surgery is done. If there are no complications, they're back within two weeks. So um, I think we don't have much time, right? Uh, I think we can go a little over. It's not about our time. <laughs> it's about time for... For, for donation. I actually for received $100. To uh, time for sending baby Janelle to India. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's Yah has mentioned that this is a an urgent situation, and so we are urging everyone watching. We received a hundred dollars. Um, like Adi, I just typed in the chat box from Sister Mabel Yankee um, towards the donation for Janelle. So we yeah. are urging everyone to please, please donate for this cause. This will help Janelle survive. Um, she does not have a very long time. She doesn't get the surgery done immediately. So we are pleading with all of you who are watching this program and do me a huge favor, send the link to multiple people. If you're watching, send it to at least five or 10 people in your contact, let them watch it. And also send the flyer, be posted on the church platform and also on any status that I'm on. So please, please make sure that you do share that information so that we're able to collect um, to help Janelle surgery as well as the equipment that are needed in Ghana um, by Dr. Yao to do her work, to be able to help save these children. We are pleading with all of you who are watching. So Auntie's back on, Auntie's very good at appeals more than <laughs> I am. And so if you wanna Thank take you. a, do another try since we lost you towards the end of your statement. I, I believe I got um, quite my statement in, and um, I was just saying that from all that we heard, um, pregnant women can have normal um, scans, so to speak. So, you know, these de um, defects are not easily detected. So that's why we need to empathize and. As a grandmother myself, four years ago, one of my grandchildren was born at 2.5 pounds. So I have seen firsthand the agony. You know, gratefully, he didn't have um, a birth defect, but he was very little when he was born. So parents, grand grandparents and all go through such turmoil when, um, you know, the babies are sick. And I'm entreating everyone to please, please, please give towards this worthy cause. Like we all are hearing, baby Janelle doesn't have that much time. Let's dig deep into our pockets. Let's be merciful just as our father is merciful and um, donate towards this wonderful cause. Um, and as Rico said, we, we will you know, put it on all platforms. And um, I'm not sure if you've seen any on the platform right now. Any yes. chat? Yeah. Um, Dr. Eddie, do you have any chat? I saw a, a couple of pledges. Yeah. Okay. If you don't mind projecting the them so that we can see them. But again, we are really pleading. We are all parents, we are all aunties, we are all grandmothers. We are all sisters. It is that important that we give to this worthy cause. Baby Janelle needs us, and let's come together as children of God, as children, I mean, um, citizens of Ghana, as, as children of, of um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let's come together and give to this worthy cause. And I'm hoping and praying that, you know, as, as I mentioned earlier, I hope that we collect it more than enough so that um, the pediatric center will have 
reserve to buy either the echocardiac machine or the pulse oxygen that I urgently needed for the early screening as well. So let's donate to this worthy cause. Thank you, thank you, Auntie. And this so, is tangible, um, right? We will be able to see a new picture of Janelle, similar to all the other children that Dr. Yao projected, see them all grown mm -hmm. up and all happy. So it's a cause that you will actually get to see the outcome of. Okay, so we do so, hope that you are able to contribute. Sam pledged $150. I've received money Thank from you, Auntie Grace. I've received money from Sister Monica Solomon, $100. I've received money from Dana. And I've received money from Swansea Yamson. I've received money from um, very, our own very Reverend Kofi Bad Martin. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you all. And Thank we you. are so Thank open. You. Edith's number is 240-475-7129. Please hit your Zelle buttons, hit your cash up buttons. And for those watching us from Ghana, the information is on there. Let's really donate to this worthy cause. And we will be richly blessed. Like I said, um, when we extend our arms, we get rewarded in so many ways that we cannot even count. And people, you know, people will remember our kind, uh, kind acts of, you know, kind deeds that we perform. So let's really donate to this cause. Our sister Yvonne Popolampo gave us $50. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> All my aunties on here, please make sure that you donate. And I have aunties in Ghana who are watching. So please, please send your money to the Echo Bank. The account number is 344-100-449-194. And mom, I know you're watching too. So I'm going to call you out. So make sure you send your money as well. Um, thank you everyone for, for watching the program. And thank you so much for your contribution. We are going to be collecting um, for the next weak really as as auntie and everyone mentioned this is an urgent case and so we are hoping that if you do plan on contributing please please send your money in as early as possible so that we can have everything submitted to dr yao so that she can then coordinate um with the hospital in india and that also takes time and so the right. sooner we get your money the sooner we'll be able to coordinate the surgery for janelle um, and any leftover monies will be donated to us the equipment that Dr. Yao also need. And we're going to have another fundraising at some point, hopefully before the year ends, to try and raise money for equipment that Dr. Yao also needs. So Our sister, Rowena Moses, sent us some money, $200. Thank you, Auntie. <laughs> and I know she posted this on all her platforms as well. And so yeah. hopefully her members will also donate thank you thank you thank you our, our uh mama for fishing and think uh, yeah i do get fishing yeah that's efficient thank you as well thank you for your donation thank you and please and I, again I, I, send it to everyone yeah i want to encourage everyone we can collect from our workplaces this is a worthy call so yeah. wherever you can post this flyer and you know talk to friends we have a, all of us have a network of friends Let's really reach out to our friends and get this um, goal met as soon as possible as, because it's very urgent. So I want to encourage everyone to not just for this platform only, but also to uh, you know, work, work at our workplaces, or our family members, just post these. Our, our brother, Jeffrey Marshall, sent us something. Okay, thank you, Uncle Jeff. Thank you. It's get, it's getting late, so maybe we'll let Doctor Doctor Yao go, and then the rest of we can stay. Doctor Anson, you can go as well, because I know you were on call before, and your daughter's waiting for you. So we're not going to keep you online <laughs> while we fundraise. We'll we'll do it for another ten minutes or so, um, to perhaps eight thirty. But we thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. This was That's done nice. within two days, and um, I just don't know how we did it, but. 
I'm glad that it was we're able to do it. So until Nelson, send a hundred dollars. Thank yeah. you, thank you, Auntie. Thank you. So Dr. Yao, thank you again. Thank, thank you, you again. Much. And we look forward to having you on, on the program again um, for further discussion of this disease, as well as you, Dr. Ansong, and then do another fundraise and particularly for your center as well. Thank you again. I know it's late, so we're going to let <laughs> both of you, you go. So You've hung in there with us this long. Mm -hmm. thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank thank you. you. It's a pleasure. Okay. Oh, all right. Have on. a good hold evening. On. We're going to stay. Oh, hold Eddie on. says hold on. Wait, wait. I'm a Ghanaian pediatric cardiologist based in the U.S. How do I get in touch with these wonderful Oh, people? wonderful, <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, Dr. Menu, you see that phone number that's scrolling at the bottom, Eddie's number, 240-475-7129? Text him and mm -hmm. we will forward the contact numbers for Dr. Yao mm -hmm. as well as Dr. Ansong. Okay, it's also on the flyers, the same phone number that's listed for Zell and Cash Up. Thank yeah. you, thank you for joining. Yeah, I don't know how yeah. you got the flyer? Maybe yeah. he's on the platform that we're we on. Bring, bring him into the fold. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> we need him. <laughs> so we're definitely going to be getting in touch with you. So definitely um, make sure. Oh, if you don't mind, let's see. Ed, hmm. Well, he can't put his number there. So you have to test this so that we can have yes. your number, Dr. Minion. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, th thank you, everyone. Good night. Take thank care. you. Good night. Bye, Bye. Bye. guys. Thank Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. So oh, we're going to... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Star Eddie. Esther, send us in $5. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Star Esther. Every amount counts. As the flyer says, any amount donated will go a long way to pay towards Janelle's surgery. So whatever amount that you have, please go ahead and donate. And we will make sure that the family um, get a hold of it for the surgery. Thank you, Auntie Monica, for watching. <laughs> God bless you as well. Do you have any other messages, Eddie? Yeah, I think, uh, okay, let me go through them first. Uh, okay, so Mary Cobalt is watching. Christiana Drew is watching. Please, I'm putting all of you, your names up so that we know you are watching. And then Yes, please put them up. <laughs> please put them up. Yeah. I think, I believe I mentioned that our sister, Mabel Yankee, donated $100. So yeah. I'll be forwarding that to you, Eddie, as well. Okay, well, we want to say a big thank you for those who have donated so far yes. and then to those who are going to donate because I know this is not the only time that we're going to collect, but as we are, you know, we keep saying it's, a, it's an urgent uh, matter. So let's, um, let's. We let's have I was getting our distracted. brother, Jumo Hilton, <laughs> sending us $500 for baby Janelle. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. <laughs> thank you for donating that, that amount of money. We truly appreciate it. Thank you. Bless you. <laughs> Do you have any more, Eddie, before we wrap up? Let me go to my Zell and see. Zell, 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 Zell. Oh, I was of mommy. Sent us something. I was of mommy. So of mommy, Rebecca Enchi. So of mommy, thank you, thank you. I know it's late and you're up watching. <laughs> thank you very much for your donation. Because thank you Asafu, so much. Because the Asafumba is online, so she has. Oh, okay. <laughs> thank you for representing. Thank you for always watching this program. We truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you for your contribution. Yeah, as well, I received uh, Sister Agnes Cortes, um, hundred dollars. Thank you, Aunt Aggie. Oh, uh, someone's see. watching from Ghana, Teresa Sewa. Hi, thank you so much for tuning in to watch. Hi, Aunt Priscilla. <laughs> I'm I am so glad we had a lot of views today. From how much? I'm up here. Okay. 
How much, Eddie? Hundred dollars. Hundred. Susama, thank you. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you, thank you for your contribution to everyone. Okay. Okay. Let me continue. Mm -hmm. You have all of it before we close up for mm -hmm. Okay, so before we close, I'd like to say thank you again to Professor Yao and Dr. Anson for sharing their expertise and their wisdom and their time this evening. And we wanna thank Janelle's family for agreeing to highlight her case uh, for this evening's discussion. Um, I know it wasn't easy to share it. And so we're grateful for giving us the opportunity to talk about Janelle and Janelle's condition and we do pray that um, we're able to impact her in terms of her surgery. And I would love to see a picture of her walking and as, as a tallest child, similar to all the kids that Dr. Yao presented this evening. And so before we leave, Eddie, do you see any more before we go? This statement <laughs> I don't want to miss anyone. This statement is interesting. From our very own Ebenezer Wesley. The purchase of V8 for MPs and ministers in pharma stop. <laughs> okay. I'm not sure what he means by that. But, <laughs> but anyway, thank you all to all the viewers for watching. And family, we hope, we hope that this program was impactful to you. Um, we do ask that you please, please donate. Send the flyer to as many people as you can. Um, as Auntie indicated, this is not just a church program. So we can send it to your co-workers, you can send it to your neighbors, any of your friends, your siblings, your cousins, send it to anyone so that um, they'll be able to help towards this noble cause as well. And again, please consider in your heart to help Janelle with any amount that you can towards her surgery. So those of you in the US, you have the Zell account that is scrolling at the bottom there, please submit your, um, funds through that account. And if you're in Ghana, you can submit it to the Echo Bank at 344-100-449-194. And as always, as always, please share the link with others so they too may benefit um, from this program. So Dr. Eddie and I will be back next Tuesday with our special guest, Mr. Hilton, and he'll be speaking on financial health and how to protect your assets. Please make sure you do tune in. And please don't hesitate to contact Dr. Eddie or I um, by submitting your questions to emcu and your health at gmail.com if you have any questions. And as always, we have to remind you that we are still in a pandemic. So please continue to social distance, get your COVID vaccination if you haven't already done so. And if you are over the age of 65, you are approved to get the booster. Um, vaccine. So make sure that you do talk to your healthcare provider to see if you're qualified to get that vaccination. And did Eddie, did I miss anything? No, I think that is it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Auntie, so much for coming on and doing our appeal. Eddie and I are terrible at asking for money. So we are, <laughs> we are <laughs> so we are grateful that you're able to join the program this evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie for collecting the money and putting all this stuff together. Yeah. Thank you. So, Eddie, I'm going to wrap. I'm going to say good night. Okay. Sorry. So, I think Steve Menu um, reached out. So, okay. Let's... So, you can contact him offline then. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Bye bye. Bye.